so guys in the ureter the important uh, things that we need to discuss is um, uh, certainly the some ureteric constrictions uh, we'll talk about the relations of the ureter again surgically the relations are important here and also about the blood supply of the ureter so i'm going to start with the uh, the ureteric constrictions so the important thing here the ureteric constrictions the constrictions we are talking about so the anatomically the three major constrictions that we'll see all of you says there are four constriction and some even say there are five constrictions but anatomically they say usually there are uh, three constrictions of the ureter see what constrictions will those be first constriction you will see at the pelvic ureteric junction that is called as the pelvic ureteric junction that first constriction is at the pelvic ureteric junction the renal pelvis become ureter that which is almost 5 cm away from the hilum of the kidney this is approximately 5 cm away from hilum the second constriction that you will see is because of the crossing of the common iliac artery the second constriction that is present at the pelvic brim it is present at the pelvic brim and this constriction is because of the it crosses the uh, it is crossed by the common iliac artery so one constriction was at the pelvic ureteric junction and the second constriction that you're looking at that is at the pelvic brim which is by the crossing of the common iliac artery <clears throat> and the third constriction is when the ureter enters the bladder that's the point where it enters the bladder the third constriction of the ureter you will see when it enters the bladder that is called as ureteral vesicular junction that is at the ureteral vesicular junction so these are the the three important constrictions which we can very well notice one is pelvic ureteric junction that is because uh, of the junction between the renal pelvis and the ureter that constriction can be seen there at the pelvic brim where it, it is crossing the common iliac artery and third is when it enters the bladder from the posterior surface that also we have this the ureteric constriction in that part now what is important in the ureter is it, like we said in the kidney the posterior relations are important there in the ureter anterior relations are more important because of some important blood vessels which are running in front of it posterior relation we have a common relation it is running on the swass major muscle so there is nothing much in posterior relation all the important relation of the ureter are anteriorly placed so let us look at the relations of the right and left side and uh, based on what we already discussed in the blood vessels and the peritoneum you already know most of the relations here i just need to put them together so talking about the relations of the ureter let us start with the right ureter first and that to anterior relation so let's look at the right ureter anterior relations there we go this is the once again the kidney here and here is the ureter and as i said you already know the structure which are forming the relation see how come if you remember the relation of the kidney we said the anterior relation of the right kidney close to the hilum was the duodenum that was the second part of the duodenum that will be forming a relation here as well so that one relation will be the second part of duodenum one relation is the second part of the duodenum which is not only the anterior relation of the kidney close to the hilum it is also the relation for the the ureter 
one blood vessel that you know guys that is coming directly from the iota when we talked about the branches coming from the iota the gonadal vessels so this right gonadal vessel will be seen going in front of it that is the right gonadal vessel or gonadal artery will be seen passing in front of it <clears throat> there are two more arteries or the two more vessels which are forming the anterior relation and again you know it guys see right ureter will be having relation with the superior mesenteric artery branches again we said superior mesenteric artery branches are going toward the right side inferior mesenteric toward the left side so they will be having relation with the left ureter now if you remember the three branches of superior mesenteric artery it was iliocolic <clears throat> right colic and middle colic artery in that region middle colic artery goes into the transverse mesocolon that is not related related to the ureter here but the two other other two arteries will definitely be in the relation that is iliocolic artery and the right colic artery will be there in the relation this is the right colic artery supplying ascending colon and this is iliocolic artery these two branches of superior mesenteric artery will also be seen in the anterior relation of the ureter makes sense its artery is going toward the right side right colic and iliocolic and once again something we discussed in the peritoneum also something which is crossing this uh, ureter that is the root of mesentery one of the structures crossed by that root of mesentery we discussed is the ureter only the right ureter so root of mesentery as well that is forming the anterior relation of the right ureter these are the relations of the anterior relation of right ureter second part of duodenum right colic vessel right colic uh, this right gonadal right iliocolic and the root of mesentery and as i said all of these structures we already discussed in the previous part in the blood vessel in the relation of kidney and in the mesentery we just need to put them together here so they're all in front of the right ureter well in the left ureter this time in the left ureter you have to focus on the branches of the inferior mesenteric artery the one which are going toward the left side the left colic artery sigmoidal artery not superior rectal because it that goes straight direct directly and forming goes to the rectum so the left colic and the sigmoidal artery and the gonadal artery from here so you already know the relations of the left ureter if i look at the left ureter once again the anterior relation left ureter anterior relation so this here is the kidney and that is the left ureter once again this time it's the left gonadal vessels left gonadal vessel will be seen in front inferior mesenteric artery was continuing as superior rectal so forget about that but the two branches that is left colic and sigmoidal arteries will be in the anterior relation that is a left colic artery and here are the sigmoidal arteries or branches which will be seen in the anterior relation not superior rectal because it goes straight it is a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery and guys once again something we discussed in the again in the in the peritoneum that we said the root of what sigmoid mesocolon remember we said left ureter is present in the intersigmoidal recess so sigmoid mesocolon is also seen in the anterior relation of the left ureter that is sigmoid mesocolon so that's pretty simple these are the anterior relation of the what ureter left ureter left gonadal vessels left colic artery sigmoidal artery and sigmoid mesocolon they are in the anterior relation of the left ureter as 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 i said earlier when you think about right ureter think of the branches of superior mesenteric artery when you think of left ureter think of branches of inferior mesenteric artery the logically which should be there in front and think about peritoneum the one peritoneal which is peritoneal fold extending toward the right side is what root of mesentery and the one peritoneal fold we discuss which is extending toward the left side that is sigmoid mesocolon and they are forming the anterior relation of the right and left ureter whereas posterior relation is common 
posterior relation, be it right or the left, it is common. That also we discussed. We know that the ureter is running on what muscle? On the swass major muscle. So it's a swass major muscle. One swass major muscle and bifurcation of common iliac artery. Bifurcation of common iliac artery. These are the anti posterior relation of both right and the left kidney. That is common. Posterior relation is common on both side. That is a swass major muscle, ureter running on the swass major muscle, and then it passes in front of the bifurcation of common iliac artery where it then for moves forward into the pelvis. So this is the these are the important relations of the ureter that you should know about. One more thing we'll talk about in the ureter is the blood supply of the ureter. See, anything which is going beyond its uh, uh, its region, like esophagus was there in the neck and then in the thorax and some part in the abdomen. The same with the ureter. It starts from the pelvis, uh, from the abdomen, and then it goes into the pelvis. So it is receiving the blood supply from the different sources. Some abdominal blood vessel will supply it. Some pelvic blood vessel will also supply it. Having multiple arteries supplying the, the ureter. So let us say, once again, if I just draw this kidney and here's the ureter. Let us understand the blood supply by looking at, let's say this is the iota. Dividing into this common iliac ureter will be in front actually. And here we have the renal arteries. Obviously entering inside the kidney, that will be the renal arteries. So the blood supply from the ureter, let's get, let's uh, fetch some hint from here itself. The blood supply of the ureter, the upper part of the ureter gets the blood supply from the renal artery itself. Renal artery supplies the upper part of the ureter. The one artery which is crossing the ureter from the front, we just discussed, that is gonadal vessel will cross in front. So that gonadal vessel will also supply it. Gonadal artery, testicular ovarian artery will also run in front of the ureter, that also supplies it. Ureter gets numerous branches, direct branches from the abdominal iota also. Direct branches from the abdominal iota. In the lower part, the ureter gets a blood supply, direct blood supply from the common iliac artery. And we know common iliac artery divides into the external iliac and internal iliac. Let's say this is the internal iliac. If I go with this, this is external iliac artery. And let's say this is the internal iliac artery. So there are some branches of the internal iliac artery which will also supply the ureter in the lower part, in the pelvic part. Now internal iliac artery is having many branches. We'll see that. And out of those branches, let me first just show you that internal iliac artery also contributes to the blood supply of the lower part of ureter. But which branches of internal iliac artery? Namely, superior vesicular artery, inferior vesicular artery, in female uterine artery, vaginal artery, even middle rectal artery will also, all these arteries, they are coming from internal iliac and all of them, they supply the terminal part of ureter as well. And the part which is in the pelvis that is supplied by all these branches of the internal iliac. Superior vesicular, inferior vesicular, uterine, vaginal, as well as the middle rectal artery. So this is about the blood supply of the ureter. You can say it's a richly blood supply. So richly supplied by these arteries from the renal artery, from the gonadal artery, direct branches from the iota, from the common iliac, from the internal iliac. It, it does get some branches from external iliac also, but uh, the important one are the ones which are coming from internal iliac. And these are all branches of internal iliac artery which supplies it. Superior, inferior, vesicular, uterine, vaginal, and middle rectal artery. <clears throat> that is the reason it is advisable not to remove the peritoneum too much from the ureter surgically. The urate, uh, this peritoneum is adherent to the anterior wall of the ureter. Ureter is also retroperitoneal. So peritoneum is running on its anterior wall. 
So while detaching the peritoneum, we have to be careful not to detach too much of peritoneum from the ureter because all these blood vessels which are supplying the ureter, they actually run via this peritoneum only and then they give off all that descending and ascending branch. Removing the ureter from the peritoneum, it actually detaches those minute blood vessels from the ureter as well. And that can lead to the ischemic necrosis of the ureter also. So that's again a surgically important point here. That detachment of the ureter from its peritoneum, it's not advisable because that will deprive the ureter of minute minute blood vessels which are running along with the peritoneum and that can lead to the ischemic necrosis of the ureter as well. So this is about the blood supply of the ureter. So as I said, the important thing in the ureter are the relations and uretic constrictions, urelations, and especially the anterior relation and the blood supply. You get the questions on these part in the ureter.